Welcome to Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Trumpeter's new 148 scale MiG-27 Flogger D. Now Trumpeter of late have brought some great kits out. We've seen the MiG-23 family and it's nice to see the MiG-27 with the drop nose just down like that. So as you can see what we've actually got is a very nice looking uh, box art on the front of the actual MiG in flight showing various weapons fit and the big rotary cannon underneath. So a quick run around your box. Okay so we've got standard sort of Russian markings as you can imagine, a little bit of blurb, we can see we've got some nice bit of photo etch in there, decals, weapons, things like that. Okay, back of your box. So your kit number for this one is 05802 and as you can see down on here again more markings, weapons, lots of weapons as you can imagine down in there. So in the box itself, which to be honest is a big box, when I look over there I'm looking at the Flogger G, it's like hmm, Definitely not as big. Oh, we were a little bit inundated here today. That'll stay there. So we have got, as you can see, a very nice stuffed box just down in here. So we have a look at the instructions first. Got the usual blurb and things that are coming out. Okay, so down in here, more colours. <clears throat> okay, usual way of doing this, as you can imagine. So we've got the parts call out, your trees, your various bits and pieces. Lots of unused parts, as we know, this is a generic kit uh, with the other different versions. Okay, so usual thing, straightforward into the cockpit, making up the seat as you go right the way through there. Then we've got the actual nozzle off of the engine. You only get the back end of the engine, it looks like you've got the afterburner ring and the actual uh, nozzle itself. Cockpit tub, pretty standard. Uh, one piece tub, rear wall going in, instrument panel. Looks like it's a deco over the instrument panel. We'll have a look at that a bit later. Your call outs for your colours, they're making up a colour here because obviously they don't do one, but obviously you're going to need that interior Russian uh, blue green colour. Okay, air intakes uh, being situated and put in obviously a two piece as we can see up there and then we've got the nose wheel multiple part going down in there into the inside. We do have another bit of the actual cockpit tub going in on the side wall, same for the other side and again four piece deco it looks like going right over the top. Okay, then it's a case of putting in, usual thing, two tubs and the nozzle, putting those together. The tail system, it looks like it is a working point. Uh, the MiG-27 family, they have this drop-down tail. I think the MiG-23s have them as well. Obviously, it swings up to one side for landing purposes. Okay, so it's like a stability fin. Looks like it's a working part on this, okay. Intakes, again, always notoriously difficult to blend these in, but I'm not sure on this particular kit. Those are going in. Wheel well. Looks to be a nice little bit of detail going down there for the main wheels. And then obviously we've got the nose gear being put together. Uh, over to the wing section. So we do have a working uh, cogged wing, which I must admit I'm never a big fan of. Uh, but, um, you know, they're in there anyway. Okay, tail system uh, for putting in the actual control surface on the rear. Looks like there's a bit more going in on there. The back plates, the air brakes to the rear. Obviously it has them each side, up or down, up to you. A couple of intake scoops going on. And then putting it all in. So really, top half going down and in. Making sure you've obviously got the main well in there first, intakes on. And then the actual burner ring on the back. So pretty straightforward. Okay, big old tail going down on there, which is fair enough because it'll hide that seam. Okay, talking about putting the cockpit together, the top half of the instrument panel. This way of doing the tails just seems a little bit odd to me, I must admit. It's uh, a little bit, um, what's the word I'm after? Hit and miss, I would say. Okay, so anyway, putting that in if you wanted to get those fitted into there. Main gear, as you can imagine, pretty straightforward, all of that going in there, onto the insides and then fitting those gear doors going on. And then we've also got speed brakes top and bottom, obviously on this one, so putting those in as well. Okay, lumps, bumps and aerials, another all important drop nose going in on the front. Okay, same on the underside, talking about obviously fitting the gun uh, and putting in the various parts at the back as well. Okay, so these are for the rear bomb racks, okay, which are a little bit weird having them down there, but there we go. Weapons fit going on there, pretty much as how you want to offload it uh, and put it down in there like that. Fuel tanks, various things, using the mirrors and tears. Uh, for that and again lots more about your weapons and then you've got a weapons guide obviously this thing is a bit of a monster you can fit plenty of weapons down onto this one then you've got your usual thing so we've got the full color call out for obviously do painting and deckling the weapons and then we've also got a nice big sheet for doing the uh, the actual markings and it is quite nice having it nice big in like this okay so there we go that's the one so that's yellow 30 down on there 
or you've got a couple of options yellow 24 uh, white 5 and blue 9 okay those lovely sort of tritone or quad tone in this case um, down there in the greens and the sandy colors so really really nice all round okay they seem to be sort of generic markings there's no call out for what units they're actually from or anything else like that okay so that's fair enough now the kit itself it's a funny how they boxed it let's look for the bigger stuff first Okay, so let me just come in here. And then if we just drop top cam just a bit. Okay, so we have got not too bad. Um, must admit, nothing you would go massively shouting about down in here. Seems it is obviously an upgrade from the uh, MiG-23 family. Uh, but generally not too bad at all. Some nice details going down in here. You might be able to see in these wheel wells and all the parts like that. But generally looking around, we have got some nice details running all over these guys right the way through. It's a nice mixture of riveting and panel line detailing all over this. It's all uh, recessed. Uh, it just looks a little bit clunky, but again, they've, it's this way of having this square sprue system going in. The gates are a little bit heavy going in, but what's quite nice to see, we can see down here we ha don't have any ejector pins in anywhere that matters, so they're totally missing from, uh, obviously, inside doors and areas like that. Multiples in the inside of the cockpit, though, but they're all going to be covered up. So generally, very nice indeed. And again, I'm not sure if it's supposed to have it, but it's got like a texture onto these gear doors which look pretty good as well but generally hopefully you can see those don't look too bad at all some really nice details in there okay so the back which is quite nice because then we don't have a seam line to worry about uh, down in these so you can probably see if we catch it in the light we've got some nice details all over this no problem at all as it runs down through the spine nice texture to it. it's going to take paint well and everything else like that okay generally no problems at all these speed brake doors look quite nice a little bit of flash tiny little bit of flash on them but nothing you would get over excited about and nice to see we don't have any ejector pins or anything else in the inside of these speed brakes they're totally clean and clear but generally hopefully the camera can get it got some nice details nice subtle recessed riveting uh, bits and pieces uh, on the top there so that's quite a nice touch uh, let's have a look at the wings so down in the wing section oh, there's one piece wings there unfortunately we don't get the option for doing drop um, flats and slats on this one it's literally generically molded up but as you catch it in the light you can see we've got some nice details on those as we're running through got the door uh, the fod deflectors for the front wheel well things like that no problem at all more doors and things going down in there Again, not a hint of anything like an ejector pin or anything on the insides. Going to have to open up these. These are slightly raised though. That's a little bit of cause for concern, these ejector pins in the wings. But generally, as you can see, no problems with any of that at all. Okay. Very nice details. Okay, so into the tail. <clears throat> So the tail, again, looking very nice, very nice details. In fact, they are very, very fine, nicely done. The instrument panel, that obviously you could take a decal right over the top, but you could probably get away with just dry brushing that in and everything else like that. The main gear, um, sorry, this is the nose wheel gear, seems to be okay. A little bit of burring between the two, a little bit of flash. You might want to just clean up a little bit, but nothing overly heavily. Again, nice details in these inside doors as well for the nose wheel. No ejector pins in there, but a very nice level of detail right the way through. Again, it's a shame we don't have opposable rudder. Um, just sort of, you know, failing a little bit on those points. But generally, I do like the detail. Very, very nice. And then we do the rear. Okay, so this is the back spine uh, behind the, obviously between the two wings in there. Then you obviously got the spine coming across the top. Again, very nice level of detail for the underside parts. No problem with that at all. This is your gears and your cogs going in there and everything else like that. These doors uh, for the intakes, very nicely done. No problem with there. This is that tail that's going to swing out of the way. Again, nice details on those. Nothing really on the blind side. Your intakes, if you could ever see down in there, are going to need a little bit of a clean out and catch it up here. We have got ejector pins in all of them. That's if you're going to worry about going in that deep to take care of them. 
Okay, you seem to have miles of weapons in here. Packs and packs, which I know is uh, Trumpeter's way of making you feel like you've got a brilliant value for money. But actually, it's stuff full of a load of weapons you're never going to use. But it's always good for your spares box. Okay, so down in here again, uh, wheel well doors, um, and obviously the main gear padding as well. The actual engine parts, the burner ring we've got just down on here, the nozzles, uh, as you can see in there. But generally nice little details. I like this where we've got the padding for the seat in there, the different little parts for the seats. Side instrument panels we can see, very nicely detailed on those, no problem at all. And then obviously we've got the gun vent down there. I think that's for a different version actually. Uh, I think that's the MiG-23's gun. Uh, nose wheel bay, top of the panel, things like that. And as you can see, limited details really for a 48 scale kit. But I would think it's probably quite acceptable. And down here, as you can see, this is the rear for the door. Very nicely done. All the small parts, nice, clean, crisp molding on that right the way down to the control grip. Doesn't look too bad at all. So very nice details on that. This is, it's just packed full of weapons. Really, really weird. It's got 20 sprues in there and it's all weapons. Okay, so other half of the wings and the tailplanes now. Okay, so this is the bottom half of the wings, again, some nice details, as you can see, we've got the gear, unfortunately they are, um, don't have any weight on wheels, they're just normal wheels, so you're going to have to put a flat spot in them, but again, raised details, which are quite a nice touch, they'll take weathering very, very nicely. These air scoops to the rear are quite nice, you might be able to see on them, they're actually slightly hollowed out. The tails, we were talking about, they just plug in, so they're not really poseable on these, but very nice details on this all the way around. Again, slight difference in textures with them, seem to be quite a little bit rougher uh, and slightly polished in some areas, a little bit odd way of doing it, but they are one piece, okay, so it's not too half sandwiched together, and we've got these little static discharges on the rear as well moulded in, so just be careful you don't knock them off before it's due, okay, but generally not too bad. The main gear itself looks quite good, some nice little detail touches down in here all very nice and the holes are very cleanly molded and everything down here for the activators for the doors things like that for the gear and then to be honest we have i'm just trying to find bits for the kit because we've got lots of other things down in here okay we'll do the kit parts then we'll come into the weapons i think okay so again some of these are going to be used some of these are not so i'm not sure which is which um depending on the different ways they're doing it i'm pretty sure this is the more modern nozzle on the back so this could be the extra one slightly different inlet doors as well okay so again being careful how you do it keep an eye on your parts your call outs and everything else like that because definitely we've got different nose wheels down in here nose wheel gear various parts uh, into this one, so you just want to make sure which everyone's doing. But all of this very clean, no problem at all. Uh, sprue gates all very nice, generally not too bad at all. Now in here, I don't think we need to go over these because these are the standard weapons fits that they chuck in with all their kits. So we've got three, four bomb sets down in there, no problem at all. We've also got then. Uh, more freefall bombs uh, and the Mir sets and all the various bits and pieces in those. Then we've got another one with the more sort of guided stuff. So we've got the um, GPS guided and um, missiles, bombs and things like that down in here. As you can see, so we've got two sprues of those. And then in here we've got your fuel tanks and your pylons and all the bits and pieces which I suppose are aircraft specific. So let's have a quick look at these. Okay. So as you can see, again, very nice. Molded with the actual pylon on these ones, okay, as well. But we've got separate pylons down in here uh, and all your various little parts. So actually looking very nice on those. Okay, we've got another load of missiles down here. So this is the air-to-air -air one, as you can see. So we've got all the various Russian uh, short-range and uh, medium-range missiles down in there. Two sprues of those. So definitely got a lot for your spares box. Now, in here, this is the side compartment we have the all-important nose which I must admit I was getting slightly worried about so this is the more detailed nose so if I just drop this camera in just a little bit more <clears throat> there we go so down in here as you can see we've got that slightly different nose very shark like isn't it, it looks like a shark just like that okay but this is the actual drop nose uh, for the MiG-27 versus the MiG-23, but it seems to have very nice details. You catch them in the light and all the parts down there. All right. We've also got slightly different air intakes, which is why we explained to why we've got two types of inlet doors. The only thing is, I'm just catching it in the light. There's a seam. You might see it. I've just caught it in the light. You catch it in the light. It's very noticeable. 
So you're going to have to polish, but that goes nose. And it is part of a panel line, but it's definitely an afterthought down into this. So it's like a seam line on this particular part, because this one hasn't got it, but this has got it just running down there. So a couple of swipes with a sander, if you're so inclined to do so. So inlet um, doors, the intake doors, again, pretty standard. Nothing much to going on with those. A little bit of detail perhaps down on the inside, but pretty much standard. Then we've got some clear parts in little bags. Okay, so I'm getting into these guys. Okay, so we do know their clear parts tend to be as clear as a clergyman's conscience. So, very nice little bit down there, catching on that leading windscreen we're reflecting off you now. Generally, really nice. And then obviously, we've got the nose uh, part down on here. Very nice, no problem with those at all. And then down in here. This should be, or I'm hoping it is, the rear canopy. No, no, two different canopies. Now, which is which? This is the flat one. Ah, right, okay. That sprue there, scrap that. This is the sprue. I don't know, was this, it just, the front windscreen just doesn't look correct to me. Which is the correct one? That's... more chiselled down. I think that's the correct windscreen for this one. And then this one is actually the one for the MiG-23. Slightly different ones. This is like the air-to-air -air version versus air-to-ground. Okay. But generally the back one we're looking at here and as we know, beautifully, if I put it over those spots of wash, you can see nothing really in there. They're pretty clear. There's no real distortions down into these. It works exceptionally well from pretty much any view angle, which is we know are very, very good. We've got some other <laughs> sprue parts down here and I'll you just love this well done trumpeter kits you never need I've got to open this just to show you we have an instrument panel there which I'm guessing is off the SU-24 so they've taken the weapons bit from the SU-24 and stuck it in here okay because I'm pretty sure there's no side-by-side -side seating in a MiG-27 okay so I think that's all they're doing because it's all of this lot for the weapons fit uh, and that's why we've got all of these down in here like that, okay? So yeah, that's the thing to that one. And so it'd be interesting to know if that is, but it's the only side-by-side -side seating I know in 48th that would have that, and obviously has the bigger um, section underneath, and that is for the old suitcase. So um, yeah. Okay, so last up, we are looking for, I thought it said, and I haven't seen any yet, um, decals. So unless I am very much mistaken, we are missing a set of decals somewhere. <laughs> Pretty sure it said in the box, photo etch, photo etch parts included, which I have yet to find. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> so we've got your standard... Russian markings, again, very nicely printed if we're honest. Generic wobble lines down in here, but at least they tend to get the spelling right on those versus when they're trying to write it. Okay, but again, the Russian stars beautifully done. The writing is all solid. No problem with any of that at all. That's very nice. Okay, then this is the standard weapons fit decal sheet, as you can imagine, it goes on, it's very ex um, extensive, obviously we've got the ones for the fuel tanks, the bombs, the missiles, the various bits and pieces, multiples of them as well, okay, so that is quite a nice touch. So the only thing we are missing, no we're not, it's hidden in the box, sorry, my mistake, is the weapons, uh, sorry, is the photo etch, so we just open up this guy, just to have a cheeky look, get it out, come on, Okay, so there we go. Actually, that's quite a nice touch. You've got some nice things down here for the speed brakes, the harnesses, the various bits and pieces, but also we've got things like the angle attack indicators, various other small parts on this one. So actually, that's quite a helpful little fret there uh, for some more of the more delicate, finer points down in there, just like that. So actually, that's not too bad at all. Okay, so there we go. That is your MiG-27 Flogger D. Um, obviously, it's just an upgraded version of their MiG-23 ML kit. Comes in a bigger box. Yes, you do get, and I'd like to quote, that amount for your spares box because that is just all the weapons fit. 
So actually, when we're talking kit parts, we're only talking, I'll put them together, this amount. So you've got a huge box for this amount of parts in there, but you do get a hell of a lot of weapons, spare stuff for your spares box and all the rest of it. So there we go, that is Trumpeter's new 148 scale MiG-27 Flogger D.